guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a very exciting tutorial for you guys today um, with a very, very exciting feature, which I'm actually about to show you. Um, there's no sun right now, so I cannot take you outside to show you, but I do have a UV flashlight that I got on Amazon. So I'm gonna show you the magic footprints, okay? So when you take this tumbler out in the... Oh! Sorry guys. <laughs> um, when you take this tumbler out in the sun, you are going to have all the footprints show up. And then when you take the tumbler back inside the house or wherever you're going, um, after a little while, they are going to disappear again, which is so freaking cool. Oh my gosh. So freaking cool. I'm obsessed. Actually, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but I just recently watched all of these movies. I had not watched them. And I do not know why I waited this long to watch these movies because let me tell you right now, I'm freaking obsessed. Like, want to buy the books, want to watch the movies over and over and over and over again, want to buy a wand, obsessed. Like, I'm obsessed. And if any, if any of you are wondering, um, I'm Gryffindor, so... <laughs> just thought I'd let you know. But anyway, guys, so I freaking love this cup so much. I want to take it with me every single place I go. I really do. Um, anyway, guys, if you want to learn how to get this look, keep watching and please leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys thought of the tutorial. Were the instructions easy to follow? Do you guys have any questions? And also, um, I'm open to suggestions on what tumblers you guys would like to see me do next. So please feel free to leave a comment, leave a suggestion, ask any questions, because I always do my best to answer your guys' questions. And once again, thank you guys for watching. Mwah. Besitos! Let's freaking get into it. You already know I'm showing you my handy dandy brush and my Mod Podge that I have in my Dollar Tree container and my scissors and of course the fabric that I got at Joe Fabric Store. Um, guys, I'm so freaking excited. Um, let's get into it. So basically you want to cut the fabric um so that you have enough to go completely around your tumbler and you want to leave a little bit of extra just to be safe and you can just cut that off at the end um but i'd rather have extra than not enough and i also mean that for food i'd rather have extra nuggets than not enough nuggets you always want to have more than not enough um anyway you guys so i'm just cutting off a little bit of excess right now because i wanted to look cool on camera but really that that did nothing. What I just did did nothing. So don't do that. You don't need to cut the fabric until the last part. But look at me showing off. Like, oh, look at me. I can cut fabric. Um, Sit down, Myra. Chill out. Anyway, I always cut the fabric in a way so that the Mordor's map is going to be the very the part that says Mordor's map is going to be the very center of the tumbler. Obviously, this is your personal preference, so you can do whatever you want. But I start off by putting a little bit of um, Mod Podge on my tumbler, just a little bit. I like to apply the fabric little sections at a time. Just think that it's easier to control or maneuver the fabric around when you do little sections of Mod Podge at a time. A lot of people do the whole tumbler Mod Podge and then apply the fabric, but this is just my way. Okay guys, I am going to place my fabric directly over my tumbler and I'm gonna stand it up on the table just because I wanna make sure that the map is straight, it's not crooked, it's not slanted. Um, and then once I know that it's good, I'm just gonna push it down, pa -pa 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 push it, push it good, yeah, yeah, push it down, you wanna push it down as much as you can, with all your might, you wanna push it da -da 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 down. Guys, you wanna push really good to make sure there's no bumps, there's no lumps, um, there's no like glue buildup back there. You wanna have a really good adhesion, adhesion. Nope, that's definitely not a word. Adhesion. Nope, that's def that's not a word. Okay, you want to make sure it's really adhered. But guys, I feel like adhesion would be a good word. No. Mm, nope, that, okay, that's definite. Nope, it doesn't sound good. Okay, I'm sorry. English is my second language, guys, okay? Sometimes my wires cross. Anyway, guys, I'm getting off track. I'm so sorry. But basically, you're going to follow this process around the entire tumbler. You are going to... Keep applying 
Mod Podge little by little, push the fabric down, make your way all the way around until both pieces of the fabric meet up. Um, and then that's where you're gonna make a little slit with your X-Acto knife. Guys, I have a confession. It wasn't until recently that I watched all of the movies and I'm ashamed to admit that. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just being a silly little goose and I needed to go back to the pond. But we finally watched all of them and we watched them as a family, which was so freaking precious. And I got obsessed with the storyline. I think it is a story that is so well written and I just, I loved it so much and I want to buy the books. I want to buy all the movies and I want to watch them over and over and I want to buy a wand and I just want all things related to the movie because I'm freaking obsessed. Um, so that's why I thought it would be so fun to make this tumbler and how cool to add the disappearing footprint element. I mean, get out of town. That is so freaking cool. Um, Anyway, guys, some people would say that I can't be a diehard fan if I barely watched the movies this late in life. But I say that you're a liar and a hater. I can still be a fan, even though I didn't watch it until I was... I was going to lie about my age, but I feel too guilty. Fine, 34. But hey, I use coconut oil and it's helping my fine lines. Anyway, moving right along, you guys, we're almost at the part where I'm going to have to come in with my X-Acto knife to make the little slits. So I will be right back to explain that process to you. Right now, I'm just going to go all the way around the tumbler, make sure there's no lumps and bumps, push everything down, make sure that the fabric is really adhered to the tumbler. And then if you guys watched my other fab light, fla fa excuse me, did I just have a stroke? fabric fabric if you guys watched my other fabric tumbler tutorial then you know that i'm gonna cut um the fabric right at the rim rim and what i do is i rest my scissors flat on the rim and i just cut all the way around now for those of you that haven't watched me do fabric tumblers you're probably like oh no but how are you going to seal it? Don't worry, Susan. I got you. I am going to um, put a lot of Mod Podge in between the fabric and the tumbler and push it real good. Push it good. Yeah, yeah. Make sure that it's really adhered, that there's no gaps, no space in between. And then once I get a few layers of epoxy, I will sand at an angle to expo expose a little bit of stainless steel so that I can get a good seal with my epoxy. If you want to see in more detail what I'm talking about, go watch my fabric tumbler tutorial because I explain that process in more detail. Okay, my little baddie pies, to make the cut in the back of the tumbler where the two pieces of fabric meet, I'm going to use a heavy-duty X-Acto knife that I got from Joanne. It is supposed to cut through cardboard and stuff, and it just helps me cut through fabric a little bit better um, than a regular X-Acto knife, so I highly recommend it. Um, if you missed the brand that I was showing, you can, you can rewind a little bit and take a screenshot of that. Um, I will try to have this linked in the description for you guys because I love you guys and I want you guys to just be able to click a link and get what you need. But anyway, guys, I'm basically just making a cut um, to cut the excess fabric off. The amazing thing about this specific pattern of fabric is that it's very forgiving. So if your line is not exactly perfectly straight, which I mean, I feel like it's really hard to get a perfectly straight line. Um, it's okay because I promise you it will not be noticeable. Um, see, told ya, it looks so good. I'm excited. Anyway, guys, okay, we're gonna move right along to the bottom. Okay, so for right now, all we're gonna do is cut some of the excess fabric around the bottom of the tumbler. I usually cut enough off to where I'm only leaving about a half an inch um, of fabric. Um, so just do that. And then in a second after the next step, we'll come back and I'll show you exactly how I finish off the bottom of the tumbler. But right now we're going to go back and focus on the rim. This step is really important, guys. Um, you want to make sure that you have a really, really good seal at the top. You don't want any epoxy getting underneath your fabric. That will make it so that you can't get a good seal. And 
you you don't want that. That's you don't you don't want that to happen to your Tumblr. That's not good quality. You don't want to do that. So just make sure you take your time doing this step. Okay, this step is really important. Um, I sped up the video, but I took my time making sure that there was Mod Podge everywhere and that there was no pieces where there was any uh, space, just making sure that the, the fabric was pressed up really tightly against the rim. Guys, look how nice it looks already. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. We're going to move right along to the very bottom, okay? So remember how we cut off all the excess fabric and just left about half an inch? Now we're going to make horizontal slits all the way around the bottom of the tumbler. And I learned this the hard way, but you want to make the slits as thin as possible um, because that makes it so that you don't have a lot of like pointy, sharp edges whenever you're folding the fabric down. So it gives you that kind of smooth, rounded out bottom, which is easier to cover with epoxy. So it's best to just take a little bit of extra time and make those extra tiny slits than to try to make big slits and not be able to hide like those pointy corners when the fabric folds. So anyway, guys, that's a really good tip for you guys to remember. The next step is going to be adhering those little flaps to the very bottom of the tumbler. I start by putting Mod Podge in little sections and then I just take my finger and I fold it down. And when I do this, I pull and tug at the fabric um, as tightly as I possibly can. And I push down those corners just to make sure that I don't have any like sharp pointy corners of the fabric. Like I said, those are really hard to cover up. They're worse than chunky glitter. So you just want to make sure that you really take your time doing this step. Um, and so I just push down with my finger. I go all the way around. I take my time. You can go back and push down as many times as you want. Um, uh, this It's just a very repetitive process for this, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and um, cut out the rest of this part because I I feel like I've already explained it very thoroughly and I feel like you guys pretty much get the gist of how you have to do it. You just have to do the same repetitive thing all the way around the tumbler um, until you've done the whole thing. And like I said, I'm super paranoid. So, um, so I always just go back over and over and I just push down all the fabric to make sure that I'm not going to have any sharp pointy corners or anything like that. Um, and I'll be right back to show you how I'm going to seal the tumbler. This is what the bottom of your tumbler should look like when you're completely done, you guys, okay? Now we're gonna move on to sealing it. Oh my gosh, guys, I love how these tumblers look with the fabric going from top to bottom. It's it's just my favorite. It almost looks like a water slide. Um, so what we're gonna do, you guys, is we're gonna apply Mod Podge to the entire tumbler. Um, this step is very important because this is gonna seal the fabric um, and make it so that it doesn't repel your epoxy or you doesn't create any dimples in the epoxy. So the sealing process is very important. I take um, a clean brush and I just kind of go all the way around the tumbler very slowly, taking my time, um, applying Mod Podge thin coats. And I just kind of make sure that I'm applying very evenly, making sure that there's no lumps or bumps or anything like that. Um, you want the coat to be as thin as possible so that it can dry, um, is dry, clear. Um, if you if you kind of like cake on Mod Podge, it won't dry clear. I also learned that the hard way. <laughs> you guys are learning from my mistakes, so this is good. But anyway, guys, you're just going to go all the way around the tumbler and you're going to seal it properly. Once you're done doing the whole... Um, sides of it or the whole tumbler i guess you go down to the bottom and you seal the bottom i do this a total of three times you guys but i'm not going to put you guys through the pain of watching me three times um i wait for each coat to dry for about five minutes before i go in with the next um coat of mod podge and then once i have all three coats on there i let it dry overnight do not try to epoxy it even an hour after because you have to remember that the, the fabric is wet um, underneath all these layers of Mod Podge because you used Mod Podge to apply it to the tumbler. So um, I would not, I would let this dry overnight. I always let my fabric tumblers dry overnight, you guys. Um, but anyway, just remember to repeat this process three times 
and let each coat dry for about five minutes before you go in with the next one, with the next coat. I hope this is helpful, you guys. This is what your tumbler should look like after you have completely let it dry overnight, you guys. Um, I'm super excited um, about this. Once you get a, the first layer of epoxy and it gets that shine, oh my gosh, it is so stinking beautiful. And the good thing about fabric is that it's not thick. So with one layer of epoxy, you can get full coverage, which means that we're going to come back tomorrow after this is dried and somewhat cured. We're going to wait 24 hours. Um, we are going to apply our disappearing footprints, which I know is the part you guys are really excited about. So make sure you get one coat of epoxy on there, let it dry overnight, and then come back for the next step. Oh my gosh, I freaking love how this looks under epoxy, you guys. I swear this has got to be my favorite tumbler. I, I cannot even. Um, I'm just going to give it a light sand. You probably won't have to. Honestly, I'm just super anal. <laughs> it, it really didn't need to be sanded, but I just wanted to make sure there was no lumps or bumps. So I just give it a light sanding. And after I sanded it, I just washed it with soap and water and I moved right along to my footstep process. Now on Etsy, if you type in footstep SVG, you'll find this exact SVG. It's, it's really easy to find, but I'm gonna try to link it in the description for you guys. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna reverse weed and create a stencil. Um, I just realized that I probably should have used a different color vinyl because it matches the tumbler so well. <laughs> anyway, but you wanna kind of create a stencil for yourself and that's what you wanna place on your tumbler. Um, and this is, this part is really cool, you guys. This is where you get to pick exactly how many footprints you want. Um, you can also put them in a different spot than I put mine. I really like doing three sets of footprints, um, like three sets of stencils total, because I like to make a really long strip of footprints, you know, because I think it's the coolest feature. Okay, you're going to need Tacket. You're going to need UV activated pigment from Woody's Goodies. And I purchased the color purple, but they have so many colors to choose from. You do not have to use purple. And I'm going to be using eyeshadow brushes that I got on Amazon a long time ago. I don't remember the brand, you guys, but it doesn't really matter. Any set of eyeshadow brushes will work. Trust me, they're amazing for painting leopard spots and for doing this. So I love using eyeshadow brushes. Um, but what we're going to do is we are going to start with our tacket. And now I know you would probably say, oh my gosh, I want to do really thick coats of tacket and really thick coats of the powder so that the footprints could like be super bright guys. That's not how it works. You literally need so little, a tiny little bit goes a long way. So basically what you want to do is you want to do just very thin coats of tacket inside of the footprint stencil. Um, the thinner the coat, the better because the faster it's gonna dry. And as soon as it dries, you can come right back in there and apply your powder, your pigment. So just take your time and go around um, all the footprints and just do very thin coats. It's okay if you get a little uh, a little bit of the tacket on, on the actual stencil itself. Um, I think it's impossible unless you super duper take your time to not get kind of glue on the stencil, but be really careful not to get it outside of the stencil. Um, because if you do and you apply your powder and you get powder, um, everywhere and it sticks to the glue that was, you know, that you accidentally got off the stencil, then when it gets activated in the sun, the footprints are going to be activating. Plus you're going to be having little chunks of powder activating everywhere and then it's going to make your tumbler look sloppy so take your time doing this be careful make sure you stay inside the stencil and just remember to do nice and thin coats nice and thin like me and yeah right i wish i want nuggets every day okay i'm getting distracted guys once we're done um by the time that you're done with the last set of footprints, the first set of footprints that you did is already going to be dry. Um, but just to be safe, I always double check with my finger and I tap, tap, tap just to make sure that they're dry. And then you want to take a separate eyeshadow brush, one that's dry, and you want to just lightly dip it into the powder. You do not need a lot of powder, you guys. This powder goes a very long way. Um, now, when you're applying the powder, you're going to kind of see this mattifying effect um, come into place. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want. 
That means you're getting really good coverage. And basically, you just want to repeat this process um, and go into every single stencil, every single footprint um, stencil, and just apply powder. Make sure you're getting the whole foot um, because if you miss a corner or something, then when it gets activated in the sun, you won't have a, a full footprint and that's not going to look very good. Um, so just repeat this process and by the time that you get to the very last footprint, just blow the excess off. Just blow any excess powder off so that you don't create any lumps when you go back in to apply your second coat of Tacket. Um, and then you guys are good, you guys. Now, you want to repeat this three times. I only do three coats and it always works perfectly for me. Um, of course, if you wanted to do more, you could, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, and I am going to save you guys the agony of watching me do this over and over three times. But now you guys know the, the gist of the process. You apply your tacket, super thin coats, um, and then once they're dry, you go in with a separate brush and you apply your pigment. And as soon as you're done with applying your first um, coat of pigment, you blow off any excess and you go right back in with another thin coat of tacket. Um, do this a total of three times, you guys, three times, um, and we'll be right back to peel off the stencils. As soon as you're done applying that third coat, you can immediately remove the stencil, and I'm going to use a UV flashlight to show you guys the magic. Um, there's no sun right now, and I really want to show you guys um, what they're going to look like, so I'm just using a UV flashlight that I got on Amazon. But as you guys can see, the footprints are super pigmented, and that's with only three coats, so that's all you need. Okay, you guys, you're going to need some tan-colored acrylic paint. The brand doesn't matter, just any acrylic paint. And then you're going to need kind of like a camel mango color alcohol ink from any brand that you want. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the bottom of the tumbler and kind of mimic that color and pattern that um, the cup already has. But let me just show you really quickly how much these footprints show up even under a coat of epoxy, you guys. I am so freaking obsessed. Oh my gosh, this is, oh my gosh, this is my favorite cup ever. Um, okay guys, so now you're, you wanna dab just a little bit of that acrylic paint over your tumbler. And I'm just gonna carefully um, paint the bottom. And I take my paintbrush and kind of just push it along the very edge. Um, you want to be careful not to get this on the sides um, so that you it doesn't look sloppy. Um, you want to make sure that you keep this just on the bottom part. And I am going to do two coats of this um, tan color. As you can see, it kind of matches the color of the map pretty nicely. Um, and what I'm going to do with the alcohol inks is I'm going to give it like little stains and stuff to make it look like the rest of the map. Um, but anyway, you guys, I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to do a second coat of epoxy, and then I'm going to come back and show you guys how we're going to apply our alcohol inks. Okay, my little angel pies, let's get this tutorial finished up. You want to make sure that the bottom of your tumbler is completely dry. You want to get your alcohol inks, your scissors, and I'm sorry that this part was out of frame. I bought these little triangle-shaped makeup sponges from Walmart and basically I'm just cutting those super sharp corners and giving it more of a rounded um, textured um, section so that I can dab the alcohol ink onto the bottom of my cup and what you want to do is you just want to dab your alcohol ink onto the sponge and then just kind of start putting it all over the bottom of the cup um, the color that I decided to use is camel and the brand is ranger I'm going to try to also link that in the description for you guys. Um, now, I'm sure you're thinking, hold on, this doesn't look like the rest of the map. Hee <laughs> hee, I promise it's going to look just like the rest of the map. Um, just trust the process. Right now, what you just want to do is to get that color everywhere, get that nice, even coverage everywhere. And the way that I'm going to break up this color to kind of mute it a little bit to make it match the cup more is I'm going to take alcohol and I'm going to spray my sponge and that's going to activate that... Um, um, alcohol ink and just kind of get it to move everywhere and get it to dim down a little bit so that it matches the map better. And then once I get it to where I like it, I'm going to get this under another coat of epoxy and then I will be right back to show you guys the finished product. Thank you guys for watching. You're my favorite humans.
the final product you guys thank you so 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 much for watching please leave a comment i love hearing your guys's feedback until next time